Hi everybody, we're going to talk about the autonomic nervous system today. That's chapter 14 in your text. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a real basic overview um, to help you understand the key part portions of that chapter. The autonomic nervous system is a dynamic responsive system that acts to maintain homeostasis within your body. Um, and you can, con you can sort of equate this to housekeeping in a complex building like a hotel. So in this case, our body is like a hotel. So fresh supplies like towels need to get set and toilet paper need to get sent to the right locations. Uh, a comfortable temperature needs to be maintained. And then hotel guests or you are free to plan their own day-to-day -day activities since the building seems to run itself or your body seems to run its most basic uh, maintenance stuff itself. So housekeeping by the autonomic nervous system adjusts cardiorespiratory control, temperature control, so that your conscious brain is free to think while the routine functions operate automatically. And this autonomic nervous system protects, is, is rapid and it protects against internal changes. So the autonomic nervous system consists of motor neurons that innervate smooth muscle and cardiac muscle and glands and they make these adjustments to ensure optimal support for the body's activity. Most of this occurs without us having conscious control. And we know some names are the involuntary, some other names for the autonomic nervous system are the involuntary nervous system or the general visceral motor system. So as we, if we remember from uh, this, you've seen this figure many times now, our CNS, central nervous system, is um, we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Um, our peripheral nervous system, it's everything outside of the central nervous system, is further broken down um, into the motor or efferent division. These are um, things that are signals extending out into the body that cause effects. Um, and if we recall, we have our somatic nervous system. This um, involves things we have conscious control over such as skeletal muscles and then we have our autonomic nervous system to, which we're going to talk about today and that is further split up into the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. So to start off we're going to talk about compare the somatic and autonomic nervous systems a little bit. So the two systems uh, differ in their effectors. The somatic nervous system stimulates skeletal muscles while the autonomic nervous system innervates cardiac and smooth muscle and glands. They differ in efferent pathways, so where those efferent neurons travel and the different neuro neurotransmitters that are secreted and also the target um, organ responses to those neurotransmitters differ. And We'll get into the details in a little later when we talk about neurotransmitters. So this is what I just said, the different effectors between the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Um, we said, I just said they differ in their pathways. So in the somatic nervous system, the cell bodies of the neurons are in the spinal cord and their axons extend to the skeletal muscles they innervate. The autonomic nervous system consists of a two neuron chain. Uh, the preganglionic chain, that first neuron, is in the central nervous system and it has a thin, lightly myelinated preganglionic axon. And then 
synapsing with that preganglionic axon is a ganglionic neuron in an autonomic ganglion that has um, an unmyelinated axon that extends to an effector organ. If we remember, a ganglia or ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies. Um, differences in neurotransmitters in the somatic nervous system. Uh, we remember we covered this in detail in our in our halothane case study. Somatic motor neurons release acetylcholine, and the effects are always stimula stimulatory. So that acetylcholine causes muscle cell depolarization and uh, contraction of the muscle. In the autonomic nervous system, we have preganglionic fibers that release acetylcholine and postganglionic fibers that can release either norepinephrine or acetylcholine at their effector cells. And depending on um, what type of receptors are sitting in the cell membranes of those effector cells, the effect of acetylcholine or norepinephrine can be stimulatory or inhibitory. So here's a picture of this. Um, the somatic nervous system these would be a motor neuron. Uh, we've got this heavily myelinated axon um, in the peripheral nervous system secreting acetylcholine to have a stimulatory effect on skeletal muscle. And in the autonomic nervous system we have a two neuron chain so here's your preganglionic neuron which dumps acetylcholine and then you've got your post ganglionic neuron and that can either dump norepinephrine or acetylcholine and it can have a stimulatory or inhibitory effect uh, depending on the neurotransmitter and the receptors um, on these effector organs such as smooth muscle in your gut, uh, cardiac muscle, and other glands.